Hello, welcome to Bluebell Storytime Online. I'm Miss Mandy from the B.B. Comer Memorial Library. Joining me today is Miss Marilyn. We work upstairs at the li library. We want you to come in and see us. We've chosen two books today about a windy day. It's that time of year. The wind is blowing. Spring is here. The first one I'd like to read is called Flora's Very Windy Day. I'd like to thank the author, Jeannie Birdsall, the illustrator, Matt Phelan, and the publisher, Clarion Books, for allowing me to share this with you. Flora's Very Windy Day. Mommy, Crispin spilled my paints again, shrieked Flora. I told you to keep your paints out of his reach, said her mother. I tried, said Flora, but... Oh, look at this mess. Outside, Flora, right now. I can't go outside, protested Flora. The wind is very strong and will blow me away. Nonsense, said her mother. Flora thought for a moment. Of course, I could wear my super special heavy-duty red boots. They'll keep me from being blown away. Fine, said her mother, and take Crispin with you. Now, Crispin did not have super special heavy-duty red boots to protect him from the wind. His boots were purple and couldn't do anything but keep his feet dry. Oh, well, Flora thought. It wouldn't be her fault if Crispin blew away. So Flora put on her coat and hat and her super special heavy duty red boots. And her mother put Crispin into his little coat and hat and regular old purple boots. And when all that was done, Flora's mother opened the door and Flora and Crispin stepped outside. The wind was indeed very strong that day. It pushed and pulled and twirled and twisted, but no matter how hard it blew, Flora stayed firmly on the ground. Ha ha, you dumb wind, said Flora. You can't lift me up because I'm wearing my super special heavy duty red boots. The wind did not like being laughed at. It doubled its strength and blasted mightily at Flora, but still she didn't budge. However, said Flora, you may notice that my little brother is wearing regular old purple boots. Now the wind tripled its strength. It swirled and swooped and whizzed and walloped and then, oh my, Crispin was being lifted off the ground. Just a little bit at first, but the wind grew stronger and Crispin went higher and then higher and then higher still. He was being blown away. He looked very frightened. And suddenly, Flora was kicking off her super special heavy duty red boots and spreading her coat to the wind. And oh my, oh my, she was sailing up toward Crispin. She grabbed his hand and closed her eyes and wished she were anywhere else in the world. But soon Flora realized that being blown by the wind was comfortable like riding along on a squishy flying chair. She decided to open her eyes. Just then they came upon a dragonfly. Will you give me that little boy, asked the dragonfly. He could polish my wings. Silly dragonfly, scolded Flora. She knew that Crispin was too clumsy to clean such delicate wings. He's my brother and I'm taking him home. If the wind lets you, said the dragonfly. Flora and Crispin flew on and on until they came upon a sparrow. Will you give me that little boy? asked the sparrow. He could sit on my eggs. What a mess that would be, said Flora, as if Crispin could sit on eggs without breaking them. He's my brother and I'm taking him home. If the wind lets you, said the sparrow. Flora and Crispin flew on and on until they came upon a rainbow. Will you give me that little boy, asked the rainbow. He could guard my pot of gold. Gold! That was tempting, but, thought Flora, Crispin's not fierce enough to guard anything. No, he's my brother, and I'm taking him home. If the wind lets you, said the rainbow. Flora and Crispin flew on and on until they came upon a cloud. Will you give me that little boy, asked the cloud. He could squeeze out my raindrops. Flora thought that squeezing out raindrops sounded like fun, but Crispin would surely catch a cold. And then who would help him with his nose? No, I 
won't give him to you. He's my brother and I'm taking him home. If the wind lets you, said the cloud. Flora and Crispin flew on and on until they came upon an eagle. Will you give me that little boy, asked the eagle. He could sharpen my talons. You can't fool me, Flora said. She saw the hungry look in the eagle's eye. He's my brother, and I'm taking him home. If the wind lets you, said the eagle. Flora and Crispin flew on and on until they came upon the man in the moon. Will you give me that little boy, asked the man in the moon. It's lonely up here, and he could keep me company. The man in the moon had a kind face, and he did look awfully lonely. But there were no chocolate chip cookies on the moon, and Crispin was so fond of chocolate chip cookies. I'm sorry, but I can't, said Flora. He's my brother, and I'm taking him home. If the wind lets you, said the man in the moon. Flora stomped her foot, or would have if there had been anything to stomp on. I'm tired of hearing that. Why won't the wind let me go home? You should ask him, answered the man in the moon. Flora hadn't thought of that. Oh, wind, will you let us go home? I'll let you go home as soon as we find the right spot for Crispin, replied the wind. You do want to get rid of him, right? Yes, I mean, I did. I mean, Flora wasn't sure what she meant. Because I could even use him myself, said the wind, you know, to work my bellows. No, thank you. Flora had finally decided I should take him home. My mother wouldn't like it if I lost him. If that's what you really want, said the wind. Yes, please, said Flora. So the wind turned Flora and Crispin around and blew them home. Flora put her super special heavy-duty red boots back on, then straightened Crispin's hat and brushed a shred of rainbow from his coat. She rang the doorbell and her mother opened the door. I decided to bring Crispin back, Flora told her. From where, asked her mother. From the moon, said Flora. Nonsense, said her mother. Now come inside. I've made chocolate chip cookies. And there they are eating. And I think Flora did decide she wanted to keep Crispin. Sweet story. Now we need to get our scarves, Ms. Marilyn, and we're going to sing some song, or sing a song about the wind. If you don't have a scarf at home, just get you um, a piece of cloth, a tissue, a grocery bag would work. Those plas little plastic grocery bags. Anything works great that you can wave around. This is Blow, Wind, Blow. You ready? Yeah. Blow, wind, blow, all through the town. Blow, wind, blow, up and down. Blow, wind, blow from left to right. Blow, wind, blow all through the night. Let's do it one more time, I think. And you guys can do it with us for sure this time. You ready? Blow, wind, blow all through the town. Blow, wind, blow up and down. Blow, wind, blow from left to right. Blow, wind, blow all through the night. Great. I hope you can try that at home sometime. Now, Miss Marilyn has a book to share with us. Uh, the name of my book is Like a Windy Day by Frank Atch and Devin Atch, and it was published by Harcourt Incorporated. I want to play like a windy day. I want to zoom down hillsides and race through streets. I want to scatter seeds, turn windmills, fly kites, wave flags, and snap wet sheets. I want to play like a windy day. I want to lift birds and butterflies in the sky. I want to steal hats, drive clouds and rain, sailboats, and make umbrellas fly. I want to play like a windy day. I want to shake the dew from a spider's web and help her babies soar. I want to blow through green grasses and crash big blue waves on the shore. I want to play like a windy day.
and fly with the leaves from the trees. I want to play like a windy day until I become like a gentle breeze. Well, great. Thank you so much for joining us today at Bluebell Storytime.